All right, guys, welcome back to the last video in the series. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about the actual inventory UI itself, which I just created really quickly inside of UMG. Uh, if you want to make this yourself, here's essentially how it's set up. Um, I have a little X button for closing it. This is a uniform grid panel. This is where we're going to be containing all of the items that show up in the inventory. And we have a little tiny equipped menu, which probably is going to change with this tiny text in here. Uh, this itself is a separate widget. This is the inventory item widget. It looks, well, it looks like this. Um, these are two separate UIs right here. And we will go into our graph and set up everything for clicking and then equipping items that you pick up in the world. Uh, if you haven't seen what we have this already, this is the third part in a three-part series. And we have a little character that runs around and can pick up little items like this, and then they add them to his inventory. I don't like this red circle anymore. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Um, that's the sphere. We'll just set that to hidden in game. I don't know. I'm a cosmetic person. I like the way things look. But anyway, we'll go in here, and then when we actually hit this, we've already printed to the screen. We know what it's doing, and it is setting our inventory to contain that item. I just want to press I on my keyboard, which right now it does nothing. And then I'm going to bring up that inventory where we can click our new items that we picked up. So in our character, here we go. We'll go ahead and say I key. That looks like I, I think. When it's pressed, we'll create a widget. This widget's going to be called inventory. Add to viewport. And we're not done yet because we still need to see our mouse. So we'll get the player controller. Set show mouse cursor. And we're still not done because I want to set it to game and UI mode. This basically means your movement inputs on your mouse won't apply to the camera anymore. So I press I, here's my inventory, this is my equipped stuff down here, I can click and drag and still turn around my character so I can still see what's going on, and I should have this little X button that closes everything out, and then I can go back to playing. So uh, how does that X button work? You just look under the click section, I just have it removing the parent, and then it sets it back to game mode only, and then it shows the mouse cursor. Uh, it turns that off actually, so it doesn't show the mouse cursor. So when the widget is constructed, we want to actually get the player's inventory. So we'll go ahead and we'll go from the character, get player character. You can use the controller to get player state, cast to my player state, get inventory. And now we have a reference to our inventory. And we're going to want to populate the grid panel with little items. I think I'm just going to do three by three. We could probably make these bigger. That should look nicer. I'm just going to go ahead and scale everything down. All right, now we're looking a little bit nicer here. Uh, I'm going to go into the inventory item itself and make that text a little bit bigger so it's a little bit more readable. And now we can actually read our text that's in our inventory. And then we'll actually load our three items in here. Well, it's actually three by three. So we'll go ahead and make a custom event. We'll call it populate grid. And we're going to have a string array. It'll populate the grid with the array. Populate. That way we can work separately from all the rest of the stuff. Now that we're here, we decide how big our grid needs to be. We'll do a for loop, not a for each loop, a for loop. For however many times from 0 to 8, because 0 plus 8 is 9 apparently. 8 is technically 9, 0 is technically 1, I don't know. For the body of the loop, we create a widget, and this widget's the item. And then we'll actually get the inventory itself. So we have to set it to a variable. Set this to grid, I guess. Here we go. Get our grid. Now, add child. Don't use this add child. Use the add child to uniform grid. That's that's the important one we want to use because that way we can actually get more options out of it, uh, which is actually what we're going to do next, which is, you know, we're setting alignment. So set horizontal alignment, set vertical alignment, and you can fill these. Now what we need to do is set the column, set column, and then we'll set the row. This is where it gets kind of gross. We're actually going to promote these to variables and then iterate those. So we'll take our row, we'll take our column, and we'll promote both of these to variables. Go ahead and copy the column variable, and then we're just going to do plus plus. Then we're going to get the row length. If the row, row length is greater than or equal to 3, we branch. And that just basically starts a new line. Copy and paste our plus plus. We'll copy, oh actually no, we're not going to copy and paste, we're going to just set this to 0 on true. If it's false, we'll just do nothing. And we'll do another plus plus or increment. Oh, my bad. Increment int. And we'll increment the row. And that should be decent. We'll see how that loads in. 
So populate grid already naturally happens and we don't need to touch the inventory, but when it actually loads on the screen, it should make our three columns like this. Um, if we want to add extra padding, you can literally just go in here and say, um, we'll see like six by six. So actually just set the six all the way around. And we have a button on top of this too, because when you actually click the item, it will uh, react a certain way. So now when I go to I, I have all these, and the button should be hovering, so I think what the issue is is there's text in the way we have to actually turn that off. Or no, actually, no, it's not that. The issue is um, these, you won't be able to click these, so I actually have the button disabled. This is probably just an issue with me setting it up, but actually before I do that, turn the visibility to hit test invisible on the text, just before we forget. And again, this is disabled, so we're going to set enabled on this. I'm going to take all this down and just say set up grid, collapse it to a function. And we can just go ahead and set the grid. Next, we'll go into our item and we'll uh, just figure out what the item is actually represented by. Um, this is going to be bound to. Actually, we'll not even bind it. We'll just set it as a variable name or something. I don't know. Graph. When it's constructed, we'll have a variable in here that's going to be called the actual item. This is our item ID. Same way we did it in the last tutorial. Oops. Set that to a string. Really, it could be a name because we're going to have to convert it to a name anyway. Type get row. And from your actual items data table, we will get that row if it exists. If it doesn't exist, uh, which is going to happen, we're going to have an instance where it doesn't exist. We're just going to set that text to nothing. So the name will be set. We're also going to disable the button again. And I know it's kind of weird to go back and forth with it, but this is just because of the fact that I'm setting up the equipment area where I'm not going to be able to click anything. And that's just a kind of strange slot system. But anyway, I'm just going to get this button and I'm going to disable it again. Last but not least, we'll go ahead and get our actual text. So we're just going to take this, break it, and we only need the name. So I'm just going to drag this in here, hide the unconnected pins because we only need the name, and we'll set row found. So when it finds the row, It'll go ahead and add that. So let's take a look at how this looks. Um, it should load this in. No, it doesn't. Yeah, that's my bad. We're going to want to make this um, exposed on spawn, and we're going to want to make this instance editable. Um, this, we're going to have to actually set this to none, and then we're going to have to set it back. So then we can have our item ID show up in here. The item ID is going to be for each of these that exist. So now we'll just drag this over here. We're going to get a copy of this index and go ahead and throw that on there. Now, it's going to be grabbing things that don't exist. There's only four items even in the world, so obviously it's going to be grabbing things that don't exist. We're going to have uh, completely blank things going in here, and when those completely blank things are found, it's just going to run this code. So now, oh, one last thing, because we didn't actually set up that um, other thing yet where we enable the button. We'll just go ahead and do this. We'll just go in here and completely disable this, because we really don't need to make it more complicated than it needs to be. Just set that to enabled. Now let's see how it works. We go in, we'll grab a blue shirt. There's our blue shirt. We can click it. It does nothing because we haven't set up anything. Now when the inventory item is clicked, here's what we'll have it do. When it's clicked, we're going to have it equip. So we'll go ahead and cast to our character. Cast to my character based on get player character. And we're going to run a function. It's going to be called Let's move everything out of the way. Here's our master pose component and everything. Inventory. Based on this custom event, custom event, equip item. So what item are we equipping? And what's it going to do? We're going to equip based on the item ID. And we're going to have a very simple model to what we had up here. Just going to copy and paste that. It gets this. If it doesn't find it, we won't do anything. But if it does find it, we're going to go ahead and set skeletal mesh. And we're gonna we're gonna network this in a little bit. It's not gonna be networked yet, but set skeletal mesh. And then also, because we also have hats, we're gonna set static mesh. So we're gonna need to run a switch really quick here to figure out which is which. The switch will be based on breaking this. Switch on type. Hide these unconnected pins. If it's a hat, set the hat. If it's a shirt, set the shirt. Actually, I want to see more pins. I need these. Whoops. Did that backwards. Everything's backwards. That's cleaner. Okay, so now we go into our inventory item. We'll go ahead and equip the item. What is the item? Well, the item is based on the item ID. Go ahead and play, and we'll see how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my red shirt here. 
go into my inventory and I'm gonna click this and there's my red shirt um, and we'll have to still set up a couple more things because there's other stuff that we have to do too let's put on a hat why not there's our hat and the hat always stays and I can't toggle it because it doesn't move down there like I want it to let's go ahead and figure that out so we're gonna get a reference and I'm gonna show you how to cast correctly to another widget we're gonna get a reference to the inventory literally just gonna be an inventory object reference compile and save now when this is actually created we're gonna set the inventory reference to the self this guy get a reference to self save go back now we have our reference and we're just gonna run a function here we're gonna call it refresh well oh, my bad custom event refresh this is gonna clear everything out and then restart so it's gonna set this to zero it's gonna set this to zero and it's gonna run one more thing that we're gonna add in here which is actually showing it the equipped items now that we have refresh let's go ahead and set up these guys so this should have its button disabled and I don't think I can actually do it within this so we're gonna go ahead and add a default value we'll just say button disabled or actually to make it easier button enabled and that's just gonna be a bool set that up to expose on spawn and when it's constructed this will be simple we just make a boolean here is the button enabled branch true go ahead and enable it now back in here we have our button enabled no this is gonna be false however it's gonna be true by default so if I go back in here it's probably gonna set that to true yep we want that to be false and this will be the only instance that it's ever false back in the inventory the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say custom event set equipped this is gonna make two slots in the player state let's go ahead and take the player state and actually make it a reference and back to the equipment section we're gonna get two values that we're gonna set up inside the player state equipped hat which will be a string duplicate that equipped shirt we'll put these under the equipped category now in our character when we begin play we're gonna to want to actually get that information so begin play cast to player state get player state the player state are derives from this class now we get equipped hat and get equipped shirt we'll go ahead and equip both of these That way when the game loads, it'll equip certain items. These items are gonna actually disappear, so this is gonna be gone. We're not gonna actually have this item in the game. So when we play it, our default shirt is gonna load instead of having nothing. So now our equipped shirt is going to be shirt. Now when we actually play, it's going to go in and get our equipped shirt and our equipped hat, and it's gonna actually equip them for us. So then we will open our inventory, it'll be in there. And actually, you know what? If the player state isn't able to load in time, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say if it fails equip the shirt green there's our green shirt loads right in so when I hit I it's gonna bring up down here what is actually equipped currently so that's what we're setting up next and what we're setting up last before I conclude the video and then I'm gonna add a bonus video where we actually set it up and network it together for equipping we're gonna actually take our conveniently loaded variables right here that are actually from this these are the variables We'll go ahead and get our player reference that we made. It's just the player state. Get equipped hat, get equipped shirt, and we'll just set these. So we'll set the item ID of the hat to the hat, and vice versa with the shirt. So now when we load in, it'll show us what's actually equipped. Or not. Okay, so my problem is actually this. Yeah, this is just, ugh. Let's just set this equipped item to the default item and we'll go ahead and make that cast again. Just cast to the player state based on the player state and we'll set the equipped hat and the equipped shirt to whatever the player actually loads in. And we'll just set these to the referenced item IDs. 
Oh, and in, instead of setting the item ID, we'll actually make our own set item ID where we can do this more dynamically. So custom event set item ID. And when we set this, it similarly runs this. When we get this, we just put it right down there. So now when we're setting our IDs, we set them like this instead. Make sure you get these connected to the right stuff. There's our green shirt loaded in right there. Uh, now, this might get a little bit weird because I want it to switch out. So when I click this, it's blue shirt now, but I still have blue shirt and it doesn't replace it with the green shirt. So we're going to set up a function for that too. So we'll go back out. When it's clicked, um, it's clicked right. Uh, oh, this, this, when this is clicked, we'll run a function and we'll call it switch. I, I got to stop saying function. It's a custom event. We'll run this custom event called switch. And this will run before we make the refresh. Just type switch. And this will take the item ID and actually add it to the inventory. So we'll go ahead and copy and paste this. Cast to our character. Get the player state. Cast to my player state. Inventory. Add. And to the inventory, we will add our item ID. Now this is going to add some crazy item duplication, so we actually have to remove the other item when we equip it. So when the button is clicked, it equips the item and also destroys it from the inventory. So we need to remove what was originally in the place so we can go and get that from the inventory itself. So actually, instead of using this item ID, we're going to use the item ID that comes from the inventory reference. So we get the inventory reference, we're going to get the equipped item. In this case, we're just going to use the equipped shirt and the equipped get the equipped shirt, get the equipped hat. And whatever the item ID is, we will switch and remove so we can add the rest. Make your switch. Get the item ID, add that. Add the hat item ID. And then we'll go ahead and remove the item that was before it. And so that switching system, it kind of, let's see how that works. I'm just going to go pick up a couple things. I'll pick up a hat. I'll pick up some shirts. All right, so, yeah, it kind of messes up a bit. And it overlays and overlaps and messes up quite a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually refresh the whole thing. When the inventory is refreshed, we're not just going to do all this crazy stuff. We're going to completely destroy all of it and then bring it back cast a player character on the player character and then we're going to run an inventory refresh and this inventory refresh is going to be quite simple we're going to go here and make a sequence after all this is said and done, we're going to create a new one, but we're actually going to remove what already exists. So that means we need to take a reference of the inventory. Go ahead and promote this to a variable. Call it inventory. Remove this. Pop everything in place. Take our inventory and remove it from the parent. Inventory refresh. That should look good. I hope so. So let's just switch between the blue shirt and the green shirt. There we go. So there's a way to switch between them. Pretty nice. All right, so in the next video, uh, we're going to be talking about making it all multiplayer and tying everything together. That'll be our little bonus video, but that concludes getting a small, simple inventory system working inside of Unreal. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Also, projects in the description.